Sorry, Mudavadi, Prime Cabinet Secretary and Cabinet Secretary for Foreign Affairs and Foreign and Diaspora Affairs, and uh, Right Honorable Raida Amolo Odinga, former Prime Minister of Kenya, and Kenya's candidate for the Chairman of African Union Commission. And we have the PS yeah. Singwe yes. for State Department for, for Foreign Affairs. Yeah. Ladies and gentlemen, let's yeah. want to start the press conference. Let us all be here. Let us be ready. I welcome excellencies. And we'll start with our Prime Cabinet Secretary. <coughs> we, we are here once again so that um, we can update you and through you the nation uh, on the steps so far as we rally around the candidature of the Right Honorable Raila Amolo Dinga for the AUC chair uh, position. So I will make some remarks and then I will invite the Right Honorable Raila Odinga to also make some comments <coughs> and uh, you'll definitely be hearing from us uh, from time to time. Um, as we forge ahead to be able to achieve victory in February 2025. You will recall that last time we were here, we gave some statements. Uh, at that time, we had not formally presented the Prime Minister's documentation to the AU but now that has happened and therefore we thought it is appropriate that we now uh, convey a message again to the Kenyan people uh, about that uh, particular development but you recall in our remarks we said that Africa also needs a Baba so we are here again to just re-emphasize that particular message. So let me make my formal statements. Uh, early June this year, I updated the nation on Kenya's candidacy for the African Union Commission chairmanship. At the onset, may I commend Kenya's candidate for the chairmanship of the African Union Commission, the Right Honorable Odinga, for his energetic and strategic engagements across the continent and globally to ramp up support for his bid in the election slated for February 2025. The country has formally submitted requisite documentation of Kenya's nominee for the African Union Commission chairmanship in the manner and form as required by the African Union Secretariat. As you are aware, the government dispatched a high-level delegation by the Principal Secretary of Foreign Affairs, Dr. Korir Sungoe, who is next to me, including the strategy team of the right Honorable Raila Odinga, which included Elikana Odembo, who is here, and Mehebub, Ambassador Mehebub, and uh, Makao Mutua, who is not with us at this point in time. They officially lodged the application to the Office of the Legal Council of the African Union through the Dean of Eastern Region. In his application, the Right Honorable Odinga has outlined his vision for the AUC which is hinged on various focal areas, namely African integration and infrastructure development, the economic transformation of the continent, enhancing intra-Africa trade,
financial independence, agricultural transformation, climate action, peace and security, youth empowerment, and gender equity and equality. Notably, since 2017, the African Union requires that before the 25, 2025 elections, the candidates participate in a televised debate broadcast live to African citizens. This is an Africa leadership debate known as Mujadala Africa. It allows the candidates to outline their vision and how they will lead the transformation of Africa through the implementation of the AU mandate and Africa's Agenda 2063. Additionally, the debate allows African citizens and other stakeholders to engage the candidates on issues they want addressed. Ladies and gentlemen, in this regard, our candidate is undoubtedly experienced and well prepared to participate in the live debate to engage the African people on how to propel the continent's growth and ensure Africa achieves its goals of African integration and sustainable development, thus making our continent a major player in the global arena. To this end, I wish to applaud our President, His Excellency Dr. William Ruto, and his government for fully, and I repeat the word fully, endorsing and supporting the candidature of Honorable Raila Odinga. To fellow Kenyans, as a nation, we have always come together to stand behind our own, whether on the tracks, the fields, or on the global stage. Just as we cheered our athletes in the recent Olympics, let us lend our full support to Honorable Raila as he carries the Kenya flag high in the race for the chairmanship of the African Union Commission. This is more than a candidacy. It is a national mission. Honorable Raila Odinga represents Kenya's voice values and aspirations on the continent. As he steps forward, let us stand with him, not just as a government, but as a united people. At this stage, let me just say that it is also programmed that next week, on the 27th of August 2024, His Excellency President Ruto will be formally launching the candidacy of the Kenyan candidate in the name of Raila Odinga. Thank you all, and God bless Kenya, God bless Africa. At this juncture, may I now invite the Right Honorable Raila Amolo Odinga to make his remarks. Thank you. <coughs> Thank you, my brother. Uh, ladies and gentlemen of the press, I am very delighted to stand before you here today. <coughs> to just confirm what uh, Minister Salim Dabadi has just said. Uh, we were here uh, a few months ago, and we said that we will come back again here. Uh, today, uh, we have had very extensive discussions about my candidature. 
Because as you know, since we were here last time, a lot of water under the bridge. I have had occasion to travel across the continent, meeting with different leaders of uh, the continent. And I just want to say that I've been very pleased and impressed with the optimism that these leaders are expressing regarding the African Union. African Union is the vehicle that has been was founded by the founding fathers of our nation. And the intention was to try to unite Africa. You remember Kwame Nkrumah said that Africa must unite. Unite or we perish. And over the years, there have been challenges that have been faced by leadership of the continent. But I want to say that we're happy to see that today the African Union has come of age from the ashes of the organization of African unity. But the African Union needs to be strengthened for it to be able to enable African countries to realize the dream of the founding fathers of a continent. A united, peaceful, and prosperous Africa, where the citizens themselves um, feel that they are free as a people and united and can work productively the continent. There are several areas where Africa is having a, a problem. Issues of health, okay. issues of education, issues of wealth creation, employment in the continent. It's a major issue. As you know that many young African uh, boys drown in the Mediterranean as they try to run away from the poverty and other challenges in the continent, seeking greener pastures in Europe. This does not have to happen. If we create conducive and enabling environment for these people to be more gainfully employed on the continent of Africa. The issue of climate change is a major challenge. Africa is a victim rather than the main offender. But Africa, at the moment, pays a very heavy price. As you can see here in our own country, we live between twin disasters, floods and drought. Many of our people perish, livestock die in those periods. How do we arrest this phenomenon? How can we make a contribution? And how can we also negotiate more effectively for compensation from the offenders who have continued to discharge the carbon monoxide in the atmosphere? We require, we need to, a stronger voice. As individual countries, Africa is weak. But as one united Africa, we can have a much stronger voice to be able to negotiate more effectively for compensation. Energy is another major issue here. Most African countries suffer from energy deficiency. Yes, Africa itself has got an abundance of resources for renewable energy. We have a lot of solar energy potential on the continent. We have geothermal, we have wind, we have waves, we, we have hydro in large quantities, which we all need to, to harness to make Africa energy self-sufficient. So many things 
which you will intend to de deal with when you go up there. So I am a candidate, as I mentioned, and I'm happy that the Kenya government has come forward to make me a formal candidate. As you have already told, we have already submitted our application as required by the AU, the Secretariat. And uh, from now on, it is all systems go. So uh, we will be addressing other issues as we move forward. But I want to thank the leadership of the continent who have expressed confidence and also the people of our country, Kenya. I will need your support in this campaign. I thank you very much for your attention. Thank you. Thank you, Excellencies, for your statement. And as we say, the train has left the station, the journey has begun. So, members of the press, yeah, yeah, I'm coming to you. I just wanted to recognize the statements that have been made. And now you'll have an opportunity to ask a few questions. We're just going to have two, three questions. And please identify yourself and your media organization. I will take it from there. Thank you. So, with your permission, Excellencies, we'll have a few questions. Yes, but, but not before, too many. Not but before too you do that, let me acknowledge that uh, I have here the PS Foreign Affairs. Dr. Korir Singoi, I have the PS Raymond Omolo uh, from the interior, and then I have uh, PS Aurelia Ronov, uh, responsible for parliamentary affairs, and then I have the chief of staff, uh, Joe Busiega, and my good team of uh, advisors and officials in the ministry. Uh, I think I'll give Mishmer Ayla an opportunity to... Yes, thank you. Try. Here is also my team. You can see uh, uh, Caroline Karugu, the former deputy governor in Nyeri County. And you have uh, Pauline Jaroge. And then you have got uh, Ambassador Elkana Odembo. You have Ambassador Mabub and Mr. Okara. This is part of my, my team uh, for this AU campaign. Thank you. Okay. Uh, thank you, Excellency, and congratulations on your candidature, uh, Honorable Odinga. My name is Ibrahim Karanja from NTV. I have one question, and the question is, were there other candidates, to you, uh, Musalim Mudavadi, were there other candidates in Kenya who met the criteria of being considered for the Africa Union Chairmanship? And if so, why was the public not made aware of them? Thank you. Um, first of all, let me just state that uh, the government of Kenya reserves the right and has the right as to whom they can nominate as a candidate. And we want to be very candid here that we have the best in Raila Amolo Odinga. And we want the country to appreciate that and rally behind Amolo Odinga. I want to make it very clear that any other issues at this point in time are sideshows. We want to be focused on presenting a credible, respected statesman for the AU chair. And I can tell you, anybody who is talking outside that does not fit that bill. So I will end there. I have one question for the former Premier. Uh, recently you tweeted or you made a post, your team made a post about uh, your intentions to go for the African Union Commission chairperson seat. And you said your first priority is your home.
party to stabilize the country politically. Do you think you are giving the continent an impression that you are still a, and who is still bogged down by the politics? Well, uh, you know that uh, I'm going to begin to work for the continent once I'm elected. That's going to be in February next year. At the moment, I'm involved in the campaign. But that does not mean that uh, Kenya uh, ceases to exist. I'm not going to be very active in Kenyan politics uh, henceforth. As I cont uh, cont we continue seeing additional faces behind you. Question after. Uh, instant coffee. So uh, you continue to be seeing different faces uh, around me as things move on. More people will join, so others will exit. That is, that, that is normal. There's, there's no problem about that at all. Um, so uh, I think your first question is similar to the second one. Because um, I, I, I don't see any difference between what you have asked the second question. It's almost the same thing. Thank you. I, I just want to emphasize that uh, I've indicated to you that uh, in the next few days the President will also be giving a formal uh, communication to the nation uh, on this candidacy uh, and, in, and there are issues that will come out including for you to know who are going to be part and parcel of the process going forward. But indeed, some of them are standing with us uh, today. My name is Justice Ucheng from Daily Nation. As uh, you've said that uh, the President will next week be launching, officially launching the campaign for the for, for Prime Minister for his UT candidacy. Uh, what, uh, uh, what, what, what actually uh, does that uh, mean? What is it that is going to happen on that particular day and has the campaign uh, calendar? It's systematic. At this point in time, uh, it is important that the President of the Republic of Kenya uh, also communicates formally uh, to the Kenyan people to the continent and to the world, that we are all. The other issue are details, which we shall work out, and the Secretariat will work out with, on this, and the government will also play its part, because this is a Kenya nominee. So I will not give you any numbers now, but the only thing I can tell you is that to be a candidate apart from you fit, fitting the bill in terms of competence it will also require relation of this matter this is not this is just the beginning so i think we will excuse the principals uh, to leave because they have other responsibilities and so we wish to thank you uh, prime cabinet secretary and right on up right odinga for this press conference and i'm sure we will keep on uh, sharing information as the campaign evolves so thank you very much and all the team members and again we wish you well in this thank you um excellencies excellencies there will be a photo there will be a photo session. so let all the teams join in we have a photo session So thank you very much and thank you for coming for this event.